Hi there, my name is Mitchell Parsons, and today I'll be discussing with you uh, my commemoratory speech on Billy the Kid. I apologize for the outfit. I am at home with my parents, and I don't actually have anything dress-worthy. However, I will still enact this speech as best as possible. When individuals discuss, like, the Old West, they often discuss gunslingers, bank robbers, troublemakers, otherwise known as outlaws. The most notorious outlaws from the stories told regarding the West is that of Billy the Kid, also known as William H. Bonney. Billy was so famous that he got a whole slew of movies after his death. Movies such as Young Guns, uh, Purgatory, and even Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I know some of you have watched that one. However, he is still portrayed as an outlaw almost every time. And you're probably wondering why I chose an outlaw to do my commemoratory speech on. Commemoratory speeches are usually reserved for the loyal, courageous, and the virtuous. I argue, however, that Billy fits this description. It just takes one look uh, to his past to be able to see. However, his story is often overlooked by mythology, surrounded the West and what it looked, uh, looked like and what it was supposed to be. You know, gunslingers out there, you've got the tumbleweeds going through that whole image. I want to tell Billy's story to use so we can better understand him as an individual, not the myth mythology surrounding him and the West. Billy's life has never been an easy one. He constantly had to fight for what he had. His father left him when he was uh, a child and Billy was left in the hands of his mother and brother. They trekked across the country together, moving from city to city, Indiana, Kansas, and finally se uh, settling in New Mexico. Soon thereafter, his mother died of lung cancer. It's a really sad story, his growing up. Billy, now a teen, was lost and alone. At the age of 16, he found work in New Mexico as a ranch hand. His popularity started to take off as a gunslinger after a confrontation in Arizona. It is alleged that Billy killed his first man in, Arizona, in an Arizona saloon during a shootout. The newly acquired reputation both helped Billy acquire work, but also ultimately led to his death. Growing notoriety gave Billy the opportunity for employment wherever there was conflict. This conflict found Billy in 1878, just a year after his apparent first killing. John Tunstall, a dry goods and cattle trader, sought Billy out. Billy was hired as protection, a bodyguard in ways, a modern day bodyguard. Um, John was receiving threats from James Dolan and Lawrence Murphy. The two had a monopoly on dry goods in Lincoln County, the place where John was also selling his dry goods and cattle. Uh, and they were angry at John for infringing upon uh, their business venture in that county. Billy was insurance against these, uh, their threats. No one would mess with a famous gunslinger, uh, John thought. Billy's notoriety, however, was not enough to stop... Uh, what happened in February of that year. William Brady, the sheriff in the pocket of James and Lawrence, led a posse that killed John Tunstall. With justice and revenge on Billy and the rest of John's employees' minds, uh, they band together. With Billy's help, they created a group called the Regulators. Their first order of business was enacting revenge by killing the dirty sheriff that occupied their county. After killing William, they turned their focus on James and Lawrence and their property. Billy and the regulators ensued in a shootout with James and Lawrence for several months. Eventually, the two opposing groups signed a peace treaty, much like our own government would. Um, this shootout only did well to grow Billy's notoriety once more, however. Eventually, Billy was pinned as a scapegoat and the leader of the regulators and was tracked uh, by the new Lincoln County Sheriff that replaced William after his killing. In 1881, Billy was shot and killed by Pat Garrett after Billy escaped death row and was found hiding out in Stinking Springs, New Mexico. The ironic part was Pat Garrett was actually a family friend and didn't want to shoot Billy, but felt he had no choice. No train robberies, no bank heists, no shootouts when the clock struck noon, Billy was attempting his hands at justice when, a, uh, when an abuse of power was exercised upon his employer and friend. It wasn't 
like the methodologies of uh, the day, like I said, there were no train robberies, no bank heists, and no shootouts uh, when the clock struck noon. Taking into consideration how we praise heroes in movies like the Avengers, Billy was just attempting to stop the villain and protect others from further harm. I argue his deeds as a regulator present, uh, presented virtues of justice, loyalty, and courage. Billy was willing to produce justice for an individual, fighting against a corrupt government that, was event that eventually had him killed. Billy disregarded the law when the law itself was no longer being upheld. Billy and others sought justice when everyone barely batted an eye at the sheriff. Along with his fe feats of self-pronounced justice, Billy also was courageous in many of his actions. We must take into consideration the courage it takes to roam the United States alone at the age of 14. I can't imagine doing that. And leading a group of regulators by 18. I personally wish I had even a smidge of courage that Billy exhibited. Likewise, the courage it must have taken to leave his brother in search of a better life. To imagine living Billy's life is to imagine at times a fictional novel. It's surreal. Likewise, for similar reasons, Billy is also loyal. I've personally never fought for my boss to, e uh, to even near the degree Billy fought for his, especially if I knew fighting for him might upset the balance within my life. However, Billy did it the exact opposite and charged full force into a shit story occupying, uh, occupied in Lincoln County. Billy knew the consequences and regardless still sought revenge for his employee. The bullet that killed William Brady was the same bullet that ultimately sent Billy to his own casket. Billy metaphorically died for John and a willingness to end your life for someone else is, ultimate, is the ultimate depiction of loyalty in my mind. Though I only told a short story of Billy's life, I hope in turn it allowed others to see him as I do, less of an outlaw and more of a real life hero. Billy unknowingly exhibited virtues of loyalty and courage and justice. He was not a ruthless outlaw, rather he was a friend, a bodyguard, and ultimately a vigilante in the face of corruption. Today I wanted to do my commemoratory speech on an individual that I heard of, or that we've all heard of, but also an individual that is strongly misunderstood and misspoken of. I hope that the story has not only shed light on Billy the Kid, but also rendered uh, him in the eyes of the onlooker as a good man. I want to end with a quote from Billy the Kid to a Las Vegas reporter in 1988 where Billy says, I don't blame you for writing of me as you have. I had to believe, or you had to believe other stories, but then I don't know if anyone would believe anything good of me anyway. And this is my attempt to disregard those stories of the time that were falsified and in turn commemorate a person that was just trying to enact vigilante work upon a corrupt government and just had a hard life as as a whole thanks for listening to my speech and i hope you all enjoyed it and have a great rest of your week bye